Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Okay, so not so much a review this video, uh, more of a sort of tutorial on printing something on your 3D printer and assembling it all. Now I'm going to split this video into two parts. I was going to stick it all in one part, but even for me it was getting extremely long. So this part one is going to be the intro to why we need this part and just showing it quickly and then all the actual printing of it, how to set up the uh, different plates on different trays or whatever you want to call them on Bamboo Labs uh, Slicer and printing the items off. Part two, I will do all the assembling. Now, it's going to be pretty intensive. There are a couple of videos on this same machine, including an exploded diagram and an animation of how to screw it all together on the printables website where you get the files from but i've not come across anything particularly with a, a, a verbal description as well on every single nut bolt screw which order to do things and during construction i did find a couple of discrepancies so uh, i will add what they are and my advice about them so hopefully you'll bear with me it's like i say it's going to be down to the minute detail every single nut and bolt if you want you can skip all this waffling at the beginning and the boring bits or whatever get straight to the bit about the, the slicer uh, and the same in part two you can get straight to the construction or just have a look at it working at the end so i'll put the stripe underneath so you can uh, skip along that and it'll all be itemized also i will put a full list quite a long list it'll be of every single part i've used including the electric motor the uh, heated inserts the tips for the soldering iron every single thing that i've had to buy for this project on a, a link to the uk amazon site there are links to some of the stuff you need in the description on printables but they're to the german side so again that, that will just increase the length of this video. Now, they are affiliated links to Amazon, so if you do click on them and buy something from that browsing session, I get a small commission. It's just a few pence, but it helps keep this channel going. So that would be great. If you are going to buy it, it would be great if you could click, click from one of them links. So what it is, I've been 3D printing for about five years now. started with a CR10 Mini. Creality CR10 Mini with the separate box and the spaghetti full of wires coming out the back. Then I went on to a CR6 SE, and both of them two, they were like projects you had to, in them sort of days, it wasn't really just open the box and, and it works. You had to mess about and silence in it. I, I went through a full silencing routine for uh, the CR6, putting Noctua fans on and everything, and it turned it into a beautifully quiet, you could hardly hear it going at all, uh, printer. And then earlier this year, got a, I'm recording this very, very end of 2023, earlier this year I got an Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. Check the link up here for a review on that fantastic printer, and it all worked out of the box with no alterations needed to anything. But I, I, I've got back into it. It was, it was a bit of a pause for a while, but then I got back into 3D printing and I saw loads of reviews on the beast in the background, which is, as you can see here, a Bamboo Labs X1C Carbon with AMS unit on the top. That's uh, automa I think Automatic Material System, I think it stands for. And that's what this review is about. A rewinder that you'll need for that i'll explain that shortly i got it in black on black friday i ummed and ard and ummed and ard it was a lot of money but i got it for i think it was 1200 quid and that included the ams and apart from the three partial rolls you, you always get with it there was two full rolls a carbon fiber purple one and a um glittery dark green ab um PLA one that you can see on it and they're 25 quid a roll so it's good value and I've plumped for it you can't take your money with you can you so I, I bought one 
and it's absolutely fantastic. I'm madly in love with it. It is a fantastic machine. But the AMS unit on the top, which holds four separate rolls of filament, and you can select it all. It's not a review of the machine, this. There are far better proper rundowns of the machines which talk you through every sort of, uh, every little bit of it. It's not an unboxing and a review. I've left that for better people, better presenters than me at that. But what it is, that AMS unit on the top, it really likes, it can be a bit finicky when it comes to certain reels. If that reel's a bit big, sometimes you can't close the lid. It doesn't like cardboard reels because it motors them round on rubber rollers. Let's have a quick look now. I've just filmed this bit now and I'll show it in, in more detail. So here's the AMS unit in uh, a bit closer. As you can see, I've got four reels of filament in there at the moment. This one at the end isn't actually connected yet, it's just to show you. But as you can see, on the left, and again, this is one of the full reels i got with it, sparkly dark green, but these two left-hand reels are the genuine Bamboo Labs, and you can see how thick it is there. It's nearly sort of a quarter of an inch thick, so it gets a good grip on the rubber rollers, and you can see the height of them. Now the one here, this is a, a make called Giant Arm, and again, you can see... I like this because it's quite flat there. Not quite as thick as the Bamboo Lab ones, but it's quite fat there, so that gets a good grip. That's okay. Even though it's a slightly, you can see it's a slightly smaller diameter than the others. And this one here is a, a different maker, a Zero. And it's hard to see in here, but it's this one is sort of tapered that angle there is like 45 degrees so the only bit you've got in contact with the rubber rollers is a tiny bit there about an eighth of an inch or less there this side is flat you know that's quite but this one is tapered i don't know why they do it to, to taper down you can see it better there but that is slanting down at about 45 degrees so uh, again it's been okay so far but there are going to be some rolls that might skip around and of course your little tiny 0.25 of a kilogram rolls that are about this sort of size they're too small for this but you can see how they moat around if i press uh, on the screen if i load so the orange all right i press the green i think press the orange press load so you can see now that's how it works and with a genuine bamboo lab reels it gets a good grip, grip and turns it and then when you press unload it's now unloading it it's heated nozzle up and it's winding it back onto the spool so as you saw there the actual thickness i've got one here of a genuine bamboo labs filament reel you can see how thick it is and how flat it is it's nearly sort of quarter of an inch thick i would think each side and that makes good contact with the rubber rollers they also have a little id chip in them so when on their genuine reels when you put them in the machine knows the color and the, the sort of um, material it is, PTG, PLA, and it automatically comes up. You don't have to manually set it. So that's one good thing. But they are quite expensive. You're talking sort of like 25 quid or so a roll. And they've got a good selection of colours and materials, but not as vast as you can get. If you're wanting multicolour ones, rainbow ones and that, I haven't sort of seen any of them. So you'd have to get another manufacturer. And sometimes that manufacturer, the reel is uh, physically smaller. It's, this one isn't too bad. It's quite flat there and there. But as you saw just then on the AMS, the zero on the yellow one was like beveled there. So there wasn't much in contact 
with the rubber rollers. Of course, it doesn't matter normally because it's it's normally held on just a support there, so the rim really doesn't matter, but it does when using the AMS. So, what you can do is get your roll on, on a non-compatible reel like that and take it from there and thread up a reel for the AMS unit. Now you can use either your, your used AMS ones, I won't be throwing any of them away, I can normally throw these away, but also as part of the inbuilt files on it, and there are, there are also some other ones online on um, Principles website and that, like a, a an extended strip you can put around here which increases the, uh, the grip. But there's also this which is on like I say, on the machine already as part of its the files it comes with. And it's a reel you can print that is just exactly the same size as the the Bamboo Lab one. You print it in two parts, like that. And it, it locks together and then you put a little lock, lock thing inside. So you've got to get your, your filament from your donor reel because it's not suitable, cardboard or whatever, too small or whatever, on to the one that the AMS unit will like. So how do you do that? You've got to, you can't just wind it on by hand, you've got to go left and right to thread it on properly. So there are a few different options and a few different reels, but this was one I liked on printables. And as you can see, I've got most of it constructed and as it turns around this is the motorized unit i'll be going through you can have a, a hand cranked one i've printed the motorized one there is a little motor unit i'll just get it this motorized unit coincides with that that gear there all screws to like a, a plank of wood i'm going to use a piece of uh, conti board shelving and that's what you put this reel on between these two pieces. And then there's just a simple support one. There's no bearings in this or anything. And that holds your donor reel. Again, screwed to the same piece of wood or whatever in line. And that, that will be the finished product. So, like I said, this two-part video is going to be on the construction of that. Part one here is where to get the files from, showing you parts of the, uh, the little animation that comes with it, showing me laying them all out in Bamboo Slicer, Bamboo Studio Slicer that comes with that, which again, I'm just used to Cura. I've got I've jumped straight from Cura and putting things on your SD card and wandering to your printer to this one, which you can send straight from your PC or your phone or whatever via Wi-Fi. It's just fantastic. And uh, just look at some of the reviews on it. They're all glowing reviews. It is a really nice piece of kit. So it's how I printed them, how I laid out each tray, one tray for each bit. And then it's the assembling it all and showing it you're running. So I'm going to leave the full assembly and every single, like I say, shaft and nut and bolt and washer, what to leave in according to the instructions, what to leave out. That will be in part two. This will be on how to lay it out in the slicer and how to get yourself basically a kit of parts. Now, until I started making this gizmo, the thing that I've printed, 3D printed in the past that contained the most parts, that basically you had to make yourself a construction kit, was this. It's a, you may not have ever seen this series if you're in the States or whatever, but it was a classic 70s British sci-fi program called Blake 7. And this is the liberator from it, spaceship. It's on um, Thingiverse, I think, all the files. This was one of the first things I printed five years ago on my very first machine. And uh, forget how many parts, but there's quite a few parts in that. That's the most 
parted thing I've done so far. But this contains even more parts. So be prepared for basically making yourself a construction kit of parts and then having to uh, assemble it all. Something I quite like doing, so I didn't mind one bit. But uh, I'll just show you, I've laid them all out on the coffee table. Let's have a look at how many parts there are in it. Okay, so this is all the parts laid out. I was to do it on the coffee table in the front room. The room I never go in now. It's just basically a, a storeroom for my models, as you can see. <laughs> But these are all the parts, and as you can see, there are a lot of them. So that's the um, so the main sort of frame for it. I've got all the bearings in at the moment. You can see all the parts involved in that. That's the the unwinder spool, the one you put your like your donor spool on. These are some other sort of drive bits that's the bit that, all the bit that makes it sort of like go backwards and forward to make the uh, left and right to guide the filament on and that's the bits for the motor housing i may have printed one or two extra of them little washers in case i lost any but uh, i've counted them and it's between 55 and 60 separate parts so if you are gonna build it be prepared there is uh, a lot of printing involved so as you can see there are quite a few parts to uh, screw together so let's have a look now at uh, the actual site that i got it from and thanks to uh, Miklos Kizeli, sorry Miklos if I've uh, pronounced your surname wrong, for the original design that this is based on. And thanks for to Diplomator for this file that you're going to see now, this set of parts, where he's improved certain things by like putting an extended shaft in instead of a two-part shaft. So thanks to them two guys, because they're the original sort of like designers of this and the improvements. So... Uh, Let's uh, have a look at it now, where we got it from, and uh, which parts to download. Okay, so this is the site that I downloaded all the files from used in this video. It's a site called Printables. Most of the time I've used one called uh, Thingiverse, but it's it's become... It's got a vast amount of files on it, Thingiverse, but it's a really rubbish search engine. Half the things don't turn up or anything. And this is where I found this one, uh, thing, Printables. So this is the, the actual one we're going to be doing on this video. Awesome Filament Spool Rewinder Upgraded. Now, so you click on here, the orange thing, download, and that will download all the... the, the zip file and when you unzip it it will put it all in the prospective folders as we shall see right so that's the site you download it from and once you've downloaded and unzipped the file it puts it into all the perspective uh, folders for each part for like the slider mechanism the donor frame and so on and so on as we'll see so we're going to get straight into it now at long last, laying it out in the slicer. And I may have mentioned before, but as we do so, anything relevant from that description on the download site, I will bring up alongside to show you any sort of discrepancy. And uh, a word of warning to uh, people who get fed up of me uh, waffling and that. I know my videos are very drawn out, but during this bit, as with the rest of the video, I, whenever I click on anything in the... The, the software program i do it very slow uh, i say look click up here for that click this file here click that file there what annoys me on some sort of tutorial videos are they just say right we'll do this we'll open this file and they're going to click 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 here and i'm i don't know about you but or whether it's me just getting old and slowing down but Everything happens so quick, and I've got to sort of like slow it down and go through it, free through it, because I can't see where people are clicking. They just assume that you know how to do this. So I'm doing it really, really slow. 
if it's boring and you want to skip it, but like I say, use the timeline. But uh, so just be prepared for a long, drawn out, slow click list. Click that description. Right, let's get straight into it now and uh, I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so this is how I did it in the slicer I'm using Bamboo sli uh, Studio Slicer, the one that uh, sort of came with the Bamboo XC1 uh, X1 a Carbon. And that's what I'll be using. If you're doing it in Cura or any other slicer, it'll be similar things. The good thing about this slicer is you can create different plates. So you can put each set of parts for every stage of the construction on a different plate. So we'll click here, new project. And we start out with the, with the first plate. Now, I'm not going to go through... As I've, I've mentioned before, it, this is not going to be a complete sort of tutorial on Bamboo Studio. I'm learning it myself. I've only had the machine a couple of weeks and coming straight to, from Cure to this, it is a bit of a learning curve. But I'm finding this a lot easier to understand from the start than Cure was. It's got some absolutely great features and one of them is is creating a different plates different build platforms so but just to go through the the setup i've got obviously at the top you select your printer mine is the x1 carbon with a 0.4 nozzle i'm using the textured pei plate the two filaments i'll be using for this are the or for to the vast majority of this i've already used the orange stuff was a uh, a generic PTG but I've set this up for this Tin Mori PETG Eco on uh, the white one there and the black one there in spool position number two. The guy who did this, Diplomator, it's called Diplomator, yep, has said, has put these settings, where are they, that he used for this We'll try and find them. There. All parts are printed here with five walls, blah, 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 blah. I read that, but I just picked here on the uh, on my slicer the strength preset. So you can pick the standard one, and the standard one has just like two walls. The strength one, as you see, has six walls. So I've printed every single part of the whole project on this strength setting. Uh, I've not used any of these, but if you want to use that, please do so. Again, I've used PETG for them all. The main reason was I got these two rolls, the white and the black one, really, really cheap on Amazon, and it prints absolutely beautifully. This Tin Mori PETG Eco, there is no stringing whatsoever. It's absolutely perfect. As you'll see later on when I'm showing you in close up the parts, it's absolutely beautiful. And it was cheaper, as you'll see later on as well. I'll show you on the Amazon the price was cheaper than PLA. So that's why I picked these. But print it with any material of your choice uh, and all the settings of your choice. So, first of all, I'll show you how I rigged up the, the six plates we'll be doing. So, when you open a project up, you've just got the one plate. So, we click here above. That add is add items, and that one next to it is add plate. So, we're going to add the items. Now, we'll go into where I downloaded it. I've downloaded it into a folder called Spill Rewinder. Um, once you've unzipped it, it automatically creates these folders. Drive train, electric drive, main body, main spindle, manual drive, sled, and unwinder. Unwinder is the, the spool holder that you unwind from. The one where you put your donor spool to wind it onto the spool you're going to be using. Forget these two here, upgrade to steel, allen key, and this all parts. These are things I've added later. So you'll just get these six, uh, see, these seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
I will not be doing the ma- the manual drive one because I'm picking the electric drive and there is a folder for the manual drive. If you want the hand-cranked version, you will uh, print all the parts for that. So we're going to start off with the one that's at the top of these in the order it downloads it at as drivetrain. So, like I said above, click add and then click drivetrain, open that up. And we've got all these files in here. Now, some of these parts, it shows you we need five of them. The three mil spacers, five off. 25 gear teeth, 50 gear teeth, bearing cap, blah, blah, blah. The bearing cap, there is four of them, but it automatically downloads four in that STL. Hexaxle 32 mil, we want two of them. One of them one lock ring uh, sorry four lock rings and here worn gear it says it actually means worm gear w-o-r-m not n that's a typo it's a worm gear now it puts worm gear in this drivetrain folder but if we look here on the part list for the drivetrain it doesn't mention the worm gear the worm gear is mentioned down here in uh, the sled. There, one worn gear, one worm gear. So there are a couple of discrepancies like that, but we're going to just download them from here. So highlight all five of them, click open, and then this comes up. Load these files as a single object with multiple parts. No, it's not a single object. It is different objects, so click no, and it dumps it there, click off there, in one big block, every part on top of each other. So if we click, if we then click on here, the ones down the side of the actual plate we're uh, talking about, if we click on here, auto arrange, the third one down, it arranges all the parts as it would for printing. Now, a couple of these parts, this shaft here, the shorter shaft, has got a hole down it, as you can see there. And this spacer here are orientated the wrong way around. You would not print them that way around. So if we click on this one, Auto Orientate, it's pretty good. It gets things right most of the time that I've found so far. We click on that, auto arrange, auto orientate, it puts things the way that it's going to print them. Now, as you can see, that is overlapping that. So we would then click again on auto um, arrange, and that, that puts things like that. Now, if we go up here again to see how many we need of each object, the three mil spacer we need five of. So the three mil spacer, which will be that. Now, if you're not sure which part is which, a great feature on this is if we go right up here, if you follow the mouse to the top left-hand corner, click on the down arrow, then hover over view, and then move down to show labels, there we've got labels on everything showing what each bit is sometimes that can be a hindrance because the the badge there that can obscure the actual part underneath but in this case it's showing you what each part is the bearing cap it's already put four of them there but the other ones it's only put one of each now it's showing here lock ring four so it says lock ring four times and again if we're on this this is the what are we on we're on drivetrain so if we go down on the right here and pair it up we've got one bearing cap there we are it says one but it automatically prints four because there's four in that thing one 25 teeth gear there we are, 
the 25 teeth gear, two 50 teeth gear, so we need two of them, the bigger one, one hexa axle 128mm long, this big long one, we only need one of them, five 3mm spacers, we need five of them, and then these three bits there, the threaded melt inserts, is uh, the metal parts, obviously, and the flathead screws. But we do need four lock rings, and there is a lock ring. So we need four of them. We need five 3 mil spacers, and we need... It doesn't say two there. It should do, but it does say two there, and we will need two. So first of all, if we right-click on there, and then click Clone... We need just one more of that, so we've got another 50 tooth gear. Don't worry about them being on top of each other at the moment. The 3 mil spacer, if we click on that, and then right click, and then select clone. The 3 mil spacer we need 5 of, so if we change that to 4, that will give us 4 additional ones, a total of 5. And then the lock ring there, again, right click on that, click clone, and we want an additional three of them to give a total of four. So we've got them, and they're all scattered around now at the moment. Um, four lock rings. Yep, we've got everything now. So if we zoom out and we click on auto arrange there, that arranges everything ready for printing. So we'd already pressed uh, auto orientate and that puts everything in the right position for printing. Now the one thing I found on here was this, the worm gear. When you click auto um, orientate, it prints it there. And it puts, a, when you uh, do the slicing, it puts a bit of a skirt underneath and you get a flat spot on there so i found it best to print that vertical you might want to experiment and see what you want to do but if you want to print it vertical all you do is above here if we look at the top there we've got lay on face so if you click on that lay on face and then we click on this face this is the face we want to lay it on We'll zoom in. And there it has laid it like that vertically. And I found that the best way to, uh, to print it. So once we've done that, you can click, if you like, again, Auto Arrange. And that's put everything in the right orientation. Oh, we didn't do the hexa axle, remember? There, the hexa axle, two of them. So click on that, click cl clone, just one more, and it's got two hexa axles there, both orientated the right way around. Click on auto arrange. And it's done that. If these labels are obscuring things and you can't see what's what, again, click on the top, overview, and click labels off. And you can see there, everything is ready for printing. Again, if you don't see this view, go up to view again. And there is this, use perspective view or use orthogonal view. Now, you might find yours is use perspective view. And that shows you the perspective view. But you cannot get absolutely directly a bird's eye view of them. You can see it's a bit hard to show on this plate, but that is not an absolute direct bird's eye view. Sometimes you'll it'll look like one object is facing is encroaching on another and it's not. So if you find that is the case, click on view and go to use orthogonal view. 
Uh, I came across one site and he was pronouncing it orthogonal, but it's orthogonal, orthogonal view, and that gives you a direct bird's eye view of the object with no perspective involved. If you want perspective, you can. You can move it around like that, but it also gives you the option of exactly a direct view downwards. So that is plate one now, and that is the drivetrain. So if we click on here, the little green thing there, and we'll call this drive train. Okay. So we've got the first plate of all the bits. We now click on this one here, add plate. That adds another plate and it automatically goes to that, the dark colour. So everything we put on will go on that plate. If we clicked add items and clicked on that one, it would add them to that plate. So we're now adding them to plate two, the numbered one and two and we can call this whatever we want. So the next folder down is, go back to our original, electric drive. So we'll click on that. We'll open, there's only three files in there. Open them. Do we want it as a single object with multiple parts? No, again. And it dumps them on that plate, but all together. So again in a big blob of parts together click on that third icon down that will rearrange them ready for printing but you would never print that bit that plate in that orientation there's absolutely no need to do it it's just a normal sort of plate so if we click on that second one down that automatically puts them in the uh, what it thinks is the best mode you can see there that cog there is overlapping so click auto arrange again and as we go down we can see that's ideal for printing now if we zoom in on this one it has picked the right face to put on on the base because doing it on any other face would have loads and loads of supports inside now the only place you might think you might need supports is just under this area here now you can see there there's a step down and inside there is nothing so that is just like a lid on top of that bit and i found it printed perfectly with no supports whatsoever as it was printing, I was watching it, and it was making these bridges from there to there, from there to there. And yes, it was sagging a bit inside, but it put the final top coat on, no problem whatsoever. And the final object did have some uh, sagging inside, but as you'll see when I show you during the assembly, that top was perfect, so I didn't need any supports for that. You may on uh, your slicer or your materials or whatever need some but i didn't for that and uh, there we go everything is ready to do on that so we'll call this what was it called if you forget go up there electric drive click on that pen there call this electric drive okay so we've now got two plates. I'm just going to go, I'm just going to do one more, the third plate. And then I'll zoom you straight to the all six plates finished. And I can go through uh, go through and show you any discrepancies I've found along the way in doing them. Uh, six plates. So click on there, one more plate. So we've created a new plate. And this time... Uh, click on add and we'll go down to the third one down the main body as you can see there we've got four files four items to print this one the screw knob there are four of and again 
for the body on here on the right hand side on the principles the description this is main body we've got the one awesome spool winder that's the main frame one axle cover drive side axle cover drive side axle cover other side axle cover other side four screw knobs and then it does say four there so we'll duplicate that and then we've got the uh, the actual um, metal bits the screw head and the inserts and it also shows eight bearings on that so uh, they are the printable bearings but we're going to be using the steel ones so we'll highlight all these four files and click open again we don't want to load it as one part click on auto arrange this one here is the uh, the hex head screw the head for the actual screws and we want four of them so click on that right click clone another three of those so we've got four now we can click auto arrange again there they are and if we click auto orientate you'll see it puts those with the face down as it should be and these because if it printed them like that these bits here you'd need support under there but if we click here auto orientate it flips them upside down as it does with these four items and that is the correct way to print them so we've got the three trays now uh, again we'll rename this what was it called it was called a main body so click on the icon there call it main body and we'll click OK so that's three plates we've got done now so we'll zoom now to all six completed if you remember again we'll click on here to show you uh, we've got one two three four five six seven folders but we will not be using the manual drive so i'll be just creating six plates because i'm doing the electric drive and uh, we'll zoom straight to that six plates now so uh, yeah as you can see uh, that's just how we did the first three plates i'll skip through now won't go through every one or a beer all day to uh, the completed full six plates all finished and, and i'll show you on each one any discrepancies i've come across along the way okay so we now rejoin it and we've got all six plates complete the top three there are the ones i've just shown you and we've got these uh, additional three underneath so i'll go through these and show you any sort of things you might uh, be need to be aware of so we'll start on here main spindle if we coincide that with the description on the right here we've got spindle and spindle nut as two separate headings but all the bits are under main spindle so we've got again if you're not sure which one is which bit is which click up here view show labels and there so we've got one bearing spindle part one bearing spindle part one is there it's that cogwheel bearing spindle part two is there this one here with the longer thread one bearing that is an actual printable bearing now i didn't uh, i've deleted that because i will not be using the printable bearings but in that file there is a bearing that you can print i'll be using the steel ones uh, and then one screw there uh, obviously a metal part and then underneath spindle nut we've got one bearing spindle part three and that's there that one um, barrel spin bearing spindle part four is that one there and again another 
printable bearing which we're not using we're using the steel bearings and a screw so that main spindle is both of them files together spindle and spindle nut that's all you need to know there so if we go along to this one sled now for the sled again anything it's asked for more than one of two two mil spacers we've put on here four m3 screw knobs four uh, m3 threaded inserts there the metal bits and so on just go down if anything it is asking for it more than once do the usual clone routine now as i've auto orientated this the right way around it has put this filament guide and carriage in that orientation now that is the best way to do it now i did use tree supports for this you want, might want to print it try it without supports and uh, unconventional supports or whatever but whatever your way you orientate this if you put that down as this part touching the base you're going to need a lot of supports under there if you put it down with that face touching the base you will need supports under there and that's the bit the bearing holds so i found that the best one and that the tree supports just held up these bits here but you might get away with it without them so again i'll leave that up to you and everything uh, there you have two versions of the uh, these filament guide you put a piece of ptfe tubing in there and you've got a short one and a long one I'm not sure which i'll be using yet and finally this plate so if we go on this one now there is something worth mentioning on this i have put as you see where are we um this is the unwinder so for the unwinder now according to this file on the right we've got one unwinder spool holder which is the big frame there one unwinder spool spindle which is this it calls it the unwinder spool axis in the downloadable files one unwinder spool nut which is that bit there one spool winder adapter plus 20 which is this one which has got like some extra depth in it and one spool winder adapter now i printed it just one of them and one of them as this calls for and as if we go on to it um unwinder it doesn't mention two of anything there but I found that you need two of these, this spool unwinder adapter. For your average size spool, as I'll show you later, you have one of these each side of the shaft that goes through here. This one here, this adapter, is for really thin small reels, like the quarter kilogram ones you get, which are a lot shorter diameter, on a lot thinner you need that to space it out but if you if you use that on a normal size spool it will not fit the frame you need two of these so uh, like i said i'll be going into detail later on but nothing was made clear about them and unlike the first one the main unit which uses ball races here these are just open and these parts here just sit in there and uh, on spin on that you don't need high precision on your donor reel it's just dragging it off that doesn't matter whether that wobbles around or not so you don't need high precision on that so they just sit in there but again you'll see that later on as we go into it so that's the six plates there and on this slicer you would just sort of like select the first one drivetrain you would then click above slice plate that is slicing that one plate now
there it is all sliced up ready it has put a brim around them items there and it's ready to uh, print so you then just click top right print plate and it would do that one you can see this will take um three hours and nine minutes to print which is a heck of a lot quicker than uh, your normal 3d printer but that's the way i printed all the parts for this project so uh, yeah that's it well, let's get back to the rest of the video now okay so that's the end of part one i'll stop this here because we're up to 50 51 two minutes already and we haven't even started screwing the thing together yet so that'll all be in part two which will probably be over an hour uh, in length because there's a lot of bits to screw together and a lot of little things i want to tell you along the way little different ways i've done it than, than the instructions also in part two that's where i'll be putting showing you on the amazon website all the bits i've bought the motor the speed controller and, and anything else i've had to buy for the project there'll be links below on both parts this part and part two for all the items uh, and i'll be uploading them both together so i'm going to wait till i finish recording part two and then upload load them both together so you don't have to wait between one and two so hopefully this has been of some use to tell you how to get all the bits ready to make the thing i hope you've enjoyed it and it hasn't been too long for you uh, if you have please give me a thumbs up if you haven't by all means give me a thumbs down if you haven't already subscribed please click the little picture of the shed here on the left uh, and don't forget i'll put a link to part two at the very very end in a couple of minutes one of the tiles and i'll see you there so loads of reviews coming during 2024 i've got a couple in the pipeline i'll be doing maybe some more projects on this but like i say i hope to catch you for part two i'll see you there thanks for watching this one bye for now